Hey guys, it's your girl Sage. I hope you're having a wonderful day or night whenever this video finds you. I am here with the daily reading. Today's reading comes from Proverbs 31, the sayings of King Lemuel. The sayings of King Lemuel, in an inspired utterance his mother taught him. Listen, my son, listen, son of my womb. Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, O mule. It is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed, and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty, and remember their misery no more. Speak up for them those who cannot speak up for themselves. For the rights of all who are destitute, speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Epilogue, the wife of noble character. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the, spin and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes a seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. All right. I mean, my sisters in Christ, I'm just going to acknowledge it. I feel that may be one of your favorite chapters in the Bible. I don't know, but um, I know personally because I've read it multiple times. It, um, I really enjoy that chapter because it's very helpful for um, giving us guidance. Now, the whole book of Proverbs, the whole Bible has faithful instruction to give us. But when it comes down to the book of Proverbs, it's a lot more about our day-to-day -day interactions with others, you know, how we want to compose ourselves, um, wisdom versus folly. Um, wisdom being, you know, he adhering to the instruction that we receive and allowing ourselves to grow spiritually in a way that helps us to mature, if you will. Whereas, um, Folly, on the other hand, falls more into the ways of the world, you know, pursuing temporary things of the world that eventually lead to spiritual death and true death. Um, but I really like the book of Proverbs chapter 31 as well, because it's the perfect segue that we are getting into with the book of Ecclesiastes, where the book of Ecclesiastes is it's a little bit grittier than the book of Proverbs. I feel like the book of Proverbs is like a nice soft pillow. Um, maybe like a nice felt pillow. And then the book of Ecclesiastes is more like a rough straw pillow or like a garden pillow. Anyways, we're not getting into pillows. Um, what I really want to talk about was what was read. So it's the sayings of King Lemuel, um, that he learned from his mother. And that's actually a great way to start it too, because it's showing that he himself was raised by a wise woman. Um, and it ends with us reading about a wise woman being praised by her husband and her children calling her blessed. So it comes in a full circle. But, um, so reading the Bible, you know, many of us, we, we've come to understand that a lot of it is directed in the perspective of men. However, we do have to remember that during those times that the Bible was being written, um, the male perspective was considered of higher value at the time than a woman's perspective. And, um, so for them to even include this 
section for women in the Bible does show that the Bible was written for everybody, but especially nowadays, we, you know, those that actually take time to faithfully read their Bible can find things in for them, even if there's no women in that part of the Bible. There's still valuable information within there. But what I really want to talk about is this is actually very faithful instruction for those that are, you know, seeking to establish themselves in their lives. And I say this because, um, as I mentioned, the book of Proverbs chapter 31 is the perfect segue into Ecclesiastes because in the book of Ecclesiastes, we actually read that the knowledgeable teacher instructs, um, especially young men, he's instructing young men, don't waste your youth on partying and being a child. Spend your youth investing because you have this energy now, but when you're older, you're not going to have that energy. So when you're older, after you've already invested your energy into your youth, and I'm talking about your career, your finances, who you're going to spend your life with, you know, the people that you're going to spend your life with, not just, not just wifey, everyone, you know, then when you're older and you don't have that energy anymore, you can relax and reap the rewards of everything you worked for in your youth. Um, and I'm saying this because the truth is, especially in this day and age, in this society that we're living in, it is so easy to fall into the temptation of your youth being the time that you go out and party, go out and drink, go out and experiment, um, you know, have lots of partners, all that stuff like that. You know, it's, it's unfortunately encouraged in this day and age to live that way, yet Unfortunately, there are some people who they fall into that lifestyle and they fall so in love with that lifestyle by, by the time they're in their forties or fifties and, um, they still have energy, but they, they start to feel a little bit more tired and it's a lot more work and energy that they have to gather in order to be able to establish themselves. So, so really it's about being smart with the way that you invest yourself. And, um, and I'll get to that in a second here because you know, King Lemuel's mother actually does say, do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. Don't waste your time with somebody that's making you feel drained and dead on the inside. But more than that, she talks about the drinking, right? You know, the drinking, while in this day and age, it's advertised as fun and the thing that all the kids do, right? It's actually intended for depressing ourselves, um, depressing our mental state. You know, I, I don't know anybody who gets wild on drinks. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't know a lot of drinking people anyways. I don't drink either. But what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, these are things that are a waste of time and we can't get that time back. We can't get our youth or our energy back. So, that's the instruction that we're reading here. And what it is asking is for us to focus on the things that truly need our attention. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and the needy. And let me just also remind you too, this is um, instruction that a wise mother is giving to her son who is a king. You know, so when I say that he's a king, first off, I just want to encourage my brothers in Christ. Hey, don't drop your crown. I'm just going to say that. But what I'm trying to say here is that Holy Spirit, help me out here. What am I trying? I had it and I lost it. You know, for us to walk in that, to us to walk in that favor, in that kingly favor, in that queenly favor, you know, we have to compose ourselves and conduct ourselves in that way. And somebody of true valor is not chasing skirts, is not building up their body count, is not wasting their time and money in bars or hotels, you know, or on on frivolous junk they don't need. Because if we can even see right here the wife of noble character. She considers a field and buys it out of her earnings and plants a vineyard. She's smart about investing her money. And, and here's the thing. It's not just investing her money. It's investing her time, investing, just investing herself and her energy. So it's really inviting you to be considerate of where it is right now in this life or, or if this is a time of reflection for you, where did you invest your youth? 
But this isn't about having regrets. This is about the word today and what we can do with it moving forward. You know, so what I'm saying here is that, you know, being smart with the way that we compose ourselves, being smart with the way that we invest our time, our energy, our finances, and whatever other resources that we have to offer. So, and I really do like this chapter because, um, again, this one is um, kind of a nice, like, guidelines, if you will, for those who are seeking to be married or the good Lord has put it in your will to be married. And I say all this because, um, actually, I'm just going to go into a little side note because uh, I do highly encourage you to read chapter 31 and see what really resonates within you. But I'm going to go ahead and end this on a little... I don't want to know. I don't know if it's an anecdote, but um, this got me thinking about the time that I was reading into the Apocrypha. And because uh, the Apocrypha, you can actually see throughout the Bible that the Bible does testify that there are things from the Apocrypha that are sound with the narrative of the Bible. Um, and I might make a video about that one day. Who knows? But um, reading in the book of Enoch. So in the book of Enoch, we're reading about how all of the um, Nephilim have come to earth, how the angels came down to earth, they fornicated with human women, and they produced these giants. Um, but they did more than just that. And by the way, you can see that, um, what I just said in the book of Genesis, but they did more than that. They actually came down with secrets from heaven and taught them to the masses. They taught... They taught us how to build weapons, how to build armor. They taught us incantations. They taught us astrology. They taught us how to read the sun and the moon. They taught us how to uh, do witchcraft. But one that really stuck out to me um, at the time I was reading in the uh, Book of Enoch was how to paint our eyelids. And I say this because um, I'm sure if you've seen my earlier videos, you might have recognized that I wore a lot of eyeliner. And um, I was wearing eyeliner at the time I read that. And as soon as I read that, I and I, I myself felt convicted that, you know, and, and I don't know if I heard God say it, but I definitely felt in my spirit that all that eyeliner you're wearing is deceptive and it misleads people into who you really are. Um, and it quite possibly could have misled or could have misled my husband, whether, whether I've met this guy or not. Right. And I'm not getting into that, but what I'm saying here is it didn't, it, it convicted me because it made me realize it was a pre presentation that was deceptive of somebody that I am not. And I wanted to bring that up because what I wanted to say at the end of all of this was that, you know, this is a great guide list for how we are to compose ourselves if, if or when we are a man or a woman of God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I am addressing you both. A man or a woman of God, but rather if you've been called into a holy matrimonial union with someone, that sometimes when we are living our lives, wasting our youth on frivolous affairs and drinking and depressing our spirit, you know, it makes it hard for someone to recognize us in that light. Whereas on the other hand, we can see right here at the, at the end, right? Her husband also, and he praises her. He says, many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Because he's referring to the fact that a lot of, a lot of us, you know, we are charming, especially women, you know, a lot of us were charming and beauty. We're all going to get old and gray one day, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And a man who's rooted in God isn't going around wasting his youth on temporary affairs, on depressing his spirit. A man of God is... A man of God is pursuing God with an eager heart. He is pursuing the work and the calling that God has called him to. And as I've mentioned before that, you know, when God created Adam, Adam wasn't going around in frivolous activity. He wasn't going around in, 
eating all the fruits and making himself lazy. He was diligent at the work that the Lord had called him to. And it was in the middle of all he was serving the calling and the purpose that he created Adam for, did they realize Adam needed a partner to support him. Thus, he put him into his sleep, took his rib, and created Eve, and woke him up and presented Eve to him. And that is why Adam refers to her as, this is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone, she shall be called woman. And thus, he recognized her as an extension of himself. So I just wanted to go ahead and mention all that because as we're reading the wife of noble character, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value because he got his rib. He got his rib back. She brings him good. You know, if, if somebody were missing a rib, if you had a rib dislodged from you, that would be pretty painful and hard to live with. So she brings him good, not harm all the days of her life. So today I invite you from reading this chapter to really evaluate your, yourselves, you know, to evaluate where have you been investing your time? Where have you been investing your finances, your energy? Are you investing in that field that's going to produce and give back and possibly put a roof over your household or, or keep you safe from the storms? When that stormy weather hits, you know, that rainy day finances or are, or are you wasting your time and energy and youth on frivolous activities that aren't going to mean anything five years, five, three, even one year down the line, you know, the way we spend our time here on earth is important because if we only have so much time before one day we, we leave this world and we face judgments and everything that we have done, good and bad and secret or known, will be brought into light. For there is nothing that is done in the dark that is not brought to light. So if this message inspired you, I, uh, I pray that this message did inspire you. Feel free to like, subscribe, and until next time, I hope all of you all take care. Bye-bye!